there's forests around you for as far as the eye can see, uh, wide open skies, and uh, it's a really beautiful country. It's how I feel Scotland should look like. They've got wilderness over here that we've lost back in Scotland. Um, so it's sort of coming over here, experiencing that uh, wilderness, uh, and, and then hopefully taking it home with us. Snow, there's been rain, now it's Oh, there's been all sorts of challenges throughout. There's been weather, you know, we've come through the Rocky Mountains in March, which is sort of facing snow. It's been the heat of the summer, black flies. I think probably the hardest thing has been the mental challenge of this. You know, it's a lot, a long time by yourself on the road. The reason for doing it in Canada um, is a huge tie into the history of this landscape in Scotland. Um, so at the same time as the forests were being removed, so were their people. Um, and so like people were getting put, on, put onto ships sent over to Canada. go to the highlands in Scotland, um, you will notice there's a huge lack of trees. It used to be forested from coast to coast in Scotland, bursting with life, full of, full of different wildlife and species. Um, and so if we restore these forests, we'll see these species returning. So she's been my traveling companion and has very much been my personal trainer in this. Uh, she's uh, she's up in the morning looking me in the face and telling me to get moving, you know. Uh, so yeah, she's, she's been amazing. People are coming, stopping at the side of the road, bringing us hot meals, um, bringing us water. A lot of people stop and they start crying, you know, they're really, they're really moved by what we're doing. Yeah, the support has just been amazing.